Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to start our function. Please set your phone into the silent mode. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's such an honor for me to be the MC of today's function. I'm Amanda. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to extend my warmest welcome to all of you. We appreciate you taking time off your busy schedules to join us today. I would like to greet our distinguished guest, Mr. Gafur Akbar Dharmaputra, Deputy Minister for Women and Children Protection, Ministry of Human Development and Culture Affairs. His Excellency, Mr. Yari Sinkari, Ambassador of Finland to Indonesia. Ms. Rice Chanchai, Gender and Governance Specialist, UN Women Indonesia. Mrs. Andriana Feni Aryani, Commissioner of Komnas Perempuan, National Women's Commission. Mr. Johannes Eko, representing RRI Director of Program and Production. Mr. Agung Susatyo, Director of Voice of Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It has been an honor for us to present the 34th Diplomatic Forum, which is organized by Voice of Indonesia. Our Diplomatic Forum is live broadcast through YouTube.com at Voi Indonesia, Facebook, The Voice of Indonesia, and our streaming at website www.voinews.id. Today, we are going to discuss a topic on strengthening women's participation in development. Before we start our diplomatic forum, we would like to invite Bapak Agung Susatyo, Director of Voice of Indonesia, to present his remarks. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This thing is Mr. Gafur Akbar Dharma Putra, the Deputy Minister for Women and Children Protection, Connecting Ministry for Human Development and Culture Affairs. His Excellency, Mr. Jari Sinkari, Ambassador of Finland to Indonesia. Mr. Mrs. Andriana Feni Ariani, Commissioner of uh, Komnas Ham. Yeah. Uh, Komnas Perempuan, yeah. Uh, and present say, Gender and Governance Specialist, United Nations Women of Indonesia, and our special guest, uh, my colleagues, Olya Boyar. She's a head of radio, ABU, uh, Asia Pacific Broadcasting Union, from KL, Kuala Lumpur. Welcome to Jakarta, Olya. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 34th edition of Diplomatic Forum since it has been organized. Diplomatic Forum is a talk show discussing international issues by inviting speakers from various cycles and related institutions. Our theme for today's Diplomatic Forum is strengthening women's participation in development. The theme is chosen because in December, we are celebrating Women's Day our Hari Ibu on the 22nd December. Women who make up half of the world's population have benefited for than men from the progress in economic and social development in the last three decades. Nevertheless, they continue to be overrepresented among the world's most vulnerable groups as access to resources and power remains highly skewed towards men. Gender equality is a goal in its own right, but also a key factor for sustainable economic growth, social development, and environmental sustainability. By providing the same opportunities to women and men, including in the decision making in all kinds of activities, a sustainable path of development can be achieved to ensure that women's and men's interests are both taken into account in the allocation of resources. We hope 
we can discuss it in the talk show. Finally, we would like to thank our honorable speakers and honorable guests who are coming to the talk show. Once again, thank you, and we welcome you all to Diplomatic Forum. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Agung Susatyo, for the warm welcome and remarks. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, today's Diplomatic Forum will be hosted by Stefano Swau and Daulat Pane and discuss a topic on strengthening women's participation in development. In this Diplomatic Forum talk show, we also invite your participation to join our dialogue by presenting us your questions directly to our speakers. And for the sake of convenience, we need to ask you to set your phones into the silent mode. Now, I will call the host of today's Diplomatic Forum, Daulat Pane and Stefan Uswau. Daulat Pane is a senior journalist of Voice of Indonesia. He has been assigned at Korea Broadcasting Service or KBS two times in 2006 and 2015. Meanwhile, Stefan Uswau is a junior journalist at Voice of Indonesia. Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's start our diplomatic forum talk show. Voice of Indonesia presents Diplomatic Forum, a talk show analyzing strategic issues and global perspective. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today our Diplomatic Forum is going to discuss a topic on strengthening women's participation in development. And this Diplomatic Forum is live broadcast on our website, voinews.id, our YouTube channel, VOI Indonesia, and also our Facebook fan page, The Voice of Indonesia. Well, ladies and gentlemen, women and development have become the international world focus of attention, of course, and the Women in Development approach introduced by the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, states that women are resources that have not been optimally to contribute to economic development. And in Indonesia, the role and participation of women is development is very important given that 50% of Indonesia's population is women. I think we should give applause to Indonesian women. Okay. But how does Indonesia manage the women's potential for the development? We're going to find it out with our speakers in here. And I would like to invite our speakers to come to the stage. First, I would like to invite Mr. Gafur Akbar Dharma Putra, the Deputy Minister for Women and Children Protection. Yes. And we would like to invite our guest too from another country which is quite friendly to us. His Excellency Mr. Yari Singari, the Ambassador of Vinland to Indonesia. And our next speaker is Mrs. Andriana Fanny Ariani from the Commissioner of Komunas Perempuan, National Women's Commission. Welcome, Ibu. Silakan, Bu. Thank you. And also, we will have another speaker, Ms. Rice Chancha, UN Women's Gender and Governance Specialist, will be joining us later. And I think we will go into oh, the she's here. She's here. She's right here. Now. Okay. Okay. I think I will take the chair for her. Yes. Oh. You can just join us. 
<laughs> we, we got informed that you will come at around 10.30. <laughs> Welcome. Yes, thank you. Sorry. Okay, thank you then. <laughs> yes, okay. Steve. Yes, we're going to enter the first segment and I will not be on the stage. I don't get the chair actually. So the first segment will be the current condition of women in development. Yes, and then the first questions will go to Pa Gapur. Yes, Pak Gapur. So please tell us what is the condition of uh, Indonesian women, especially in the de development uh, today. Yeah, for Indonesia, uh, this is very interesting. We are a country that we have, we used to have a president, a female president, Ibu Megawati. And we have also currently, um, it's not only member of the parliament, but it's the speaker of the house, and is Ibu Puan Maharani. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've been posted twice in the USA, and even now they are trying to get how to become uh, a female, become a president. So, Indonesia is ahead on that issue. So. It is encouraging, yes, uh, uh, thanks for that. Uh, but we still have a lot of to do. Being an economist, this is the area why we have to fight for for the coming uh, five years plan uh, of the uh, middle plan of the, uh, the country. And of course, um, here and there, as, as, as you can see here, there are some women representing uh, the world, as Pa Agung mentioned, 50%. Of course, we are also 50%, but, uh, Mr. Ambassador. So the opportunity is uh, huge for all of us uh, to participate in the development. But how that we are going to contribute, that is the most important thing. So the issue is empowering, not only for a man, but also for women, especially the young female, uh, the young ladies that, as uh, Bu Raisa, uh, just coming uh, in order to um, to deliver her motherhood for. Um, um, Hey, she, she has to do that. So I mean, uh, so we have to prepare for the young uh, women to be mothers as uh, they are become the uh, future of the nations. Okay. Okay. Maybe women are not only mothers. I would like to ask opinion from the National Commission for Women from Indonesia. So how do you react about this? How do you see about the women? Because we are talking about women, I think we should ask the women. <laughs> Okay, so uh, actually, yeah, as uh, Pak Gofur said, that Indonesia have uh, 50, around 50 percent the population, but also uh, have a lot of problem with the gender issues. For example, like in a annual report of uh, Komnas Perempuan, uh, the violence against women are increased every years, and this uh, last year is around uh, 400 to. Uh, 400 through 2070 something so it's still uh, a lot of uh, with the also the regulation that not responsive gender and also the dis discrimination discrimination is uh, also uh, because of the fundamentalism conservatism and we now uh, Komnas Perempuan found around 421 uh, discriminative bylaws that uh, exist in Indonesia and uh, it's more uh, we have also the gender responsive uh, law but it's around three 300 so it's lower than the discriminative one so it's important to to make sure that uh, women are protected with the regulation and also like in a mandate of a uh, committee CEDAW, that's uh, the the convention on uh, uh, this uh, of all forms against discrimination against women it said that uh, women need uh, affirmative action so they can fully participate in the development thank you thank you very much okay uh, i just want to inform the <laughs> floors here that uh, pak gapur was a former diplomat i i 
still, <laughs> and for the first time, I think that he, he was good in, in, in politics, in, in diplomacy, but now he is talking about women. <laughs> okay, Pak Gapur, uh, how do you assess about the participation and also uh, the benefit, for example, that, that the women can get from the development we are, we have, we are, we are having now? It is, if we are talking about development, you mean access. So access to education, access to health, access to uh, working uh, in a good condition. So this is kind of uh, things that have to be provided. It's not only by the government, but also by the society, especially the uh, private sector. So it means that if the uh, women have the equal opportunity to be in the various uh, field of the economy, uh, and, the develop, uh, and the country will develop. Uh, there is a good study by McKinsey that if the women get involved in the development, the uh, GDP increased by 23%, higher than the, uh, the, uh, the current situation. So uh, by having that kind of a notion in mind, so we have to prepare the ladies. Uh, for me, uh, from the <coughs> excuse me from the Kemenko PMK from the coordinating ministry for human development and cultural affairs we prepare them from the beginning uh, meaning that before they get married they have to uh, follow a certain um, a wedding um, uh, certificate and a, a wedding plan certificate in the way that they have to know what to do next as a mother and also being a, a woman to be a work in the uh, economic development. So what I'm saying is here that women needs to prepare themselves as well as a man in the way. But women, because they have the their of mother function, they should be um, more prepared and uh, themselves. Uh, because through them, uh, the future of the nation will develop. And uh, we also need to prepare uh, not only uh, the access that I mentioned for education nowadays, uh, because of the total population of Indonesia, nearly 270 million. So the average for education is only 8.2 uh, years. But the government already uh, have the obligatory uh, schooling for six, nine, and 12 years. It means that every single person in Indonesia has to get enrolled in the education. That's why the government uh, provides a, a certain uh, social benefit for those who are willing to uh, go study in the uh, elementary school, in the middle school, uh, and the higher middle school. Different uh, social benefit. Even for those who are not in privilege, the government also give a PKH, um, um, uh, Family Hope uh, Program, that uh, having those uh, children at school, uh, the government give a certain uh, social benefit. And this kind, uh, w this way that the government try to increase the enrollment of the uh, youngsters, especially into school. But also the government develop a vocational program in order for those who willing willing to work uh, directly after school, uh, they can uh, have a certificate and uh, work in the uh, several industries nearby uh, cities like uh, Jakarta or Bandung in the big cities. Uh, so this kind of person, uh, they have a special uh, talent uh, for working in, in the industrial sector. But those who like to go to the university, there is also scholarship, bidik misi, or LPDP if they would like to continue their studies abroad, uh, either in uh, Europe, Australia, or in the US. It depends where they want to study for their uh, master or for PhD. This kind of benefit that why we would like uh, them to be uh, study further uh, their schooling and also for we have a program, BPJS Kesehatan, also BPJS Tenaga Kerja. This is uh, uh, the medical um, 
um, cov uh, aid uh, covers for the health uh, insurance, on, and it, by 2024, I believe the uh, coverage will uh, cover all of the Indonesian. Hopefully, uh, so this kind of programs uh, implemented by the government is uh, to increase the human development index of Indonesia and currently Indonesia is already in the high human development index it means that the economy uh, grow uh, that growth every year uh, could improve the welfare of the, uh, the population. But again, uh, the government is not the only source of the uh, employment. So we need the uh, private sector also to develop the economy by providing a lot of uh, job. And that's why the country uh, invite a lot of investment in order to improve uh, and the, uh, generate generate a lot of jobs and uh, through this uh, we would like that uh, more and more uh, women go to, uh, go to work but in some cases we also not encourage all of them to uh, to go abroad for uh, for work but also nearby especially if they can do that through their houses. It means that the uh, digital economy is one of the way uh, to cope uh, with the, uh, the tax of uh, motherhood of the women. So they can uh, still uh, protect their children, especially the youngsters. So while they are working, they can also put their eyes on uh, the children. And this is the, uh, the social um, um, job that uh, a mother cannot uh, uh, relate or divide it into uh, other people. So a mother and a father has their own function and uh, the, through the development and the contribution of them to the development, it will uh, improve the, the whole economy. Okay, so in short, I can say that education is a very important... Uh, it is. Yes, for uh, to to promote women's uh, participation in development. Yes, and they have a uh, father and mother have equal rights and uh, obligation for the family. Okay, Steve. Yes, uh, that's from the ministry in Indonesia. I would like to know how the UN women see about Indonesia's so women's rights. How is the evaluation of UN women about the condition of Indonesian women in the development, including economy, social, and politics? First of all, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here and to be part of the conversations. Um, I apologize for coming late today, but I think I am a living example of a working woman who is trying to also like juggle with um, motherhood responsibility. And I think I'm, I'm very lucky um, to be able to, to do that, also because I have a husband who is also very supportive. Um, and I think I'm talking about that because I wanted to draw the personal experience into the larger issues within Indonesia. Um, I think um, before we go into the challenges that Indonesia still face and still have a lot to do, we, com we d definitely celebrate a lot of progress I've made over the past decades in terms of um, parity in primary education, in terms of improvements of human development index and etc. But looking ahead when it comes to inequality, uh, I was sitting in the Aurum forum um, where uh, we have the, the leadership from Bapinas. Uh, we're having a conversation with the UN system as a whole. One of the key cross-cutting areas that have been discussed as, as a challenge for the country and something to tackle as we move forward is the issues of inequality. And when we come to inequality, there are different dimensions of inequalities, right? from gender, from income, mm -hmm. from different dimension, health, education, etc. Um, a lot of time when we talk about inequality, we, we got really hung up on in income inequalities um, without actually seeing the underlying issues because the income is just a reflection of the other things, right, that, it, that is underlying yes. in the society. Um, and I would argue that of different dimensions of inequalities in Indonesia, probably gender equality is something for us to, to tackle and something to continue to work on. We look into a different spheres of the statistics that we have, but this is not just 
just before I go into this, it's not to say that Indonesia is only one country in that, in that, um, in, in that fight for gender equality. Not, no country in the world actually has achieved gender equality. So each and every one of us have a job to do um, to actually raise the bar for us and uh, the way that the UN women seeing these issues we're looking into the we, we, we look into the span of a three dimension of sustainable development social economic and an environment right and I'd like to highlight from the social side uh, we have seen very clearly that despite increase in education closing gap in um, priority of education at the primary um, the look of it is very different when you go into secondary education, when you go to tertiary education, and when we talk specifically about the translation of uh, education quality into actually job opportunities for women in Indonesia. And I'm saying this because I have a hard uh, evidence, right, when we're talking about the labor force participation in Indonesia from 1997 to, to 2017, um, which is spanned through like two decades. We are quite standstill at the rates of 50% of uh, we, um, labor force participation of women. So meaning that we only um, leverage from half, one half of the economy and the other halves are not fully participating in the formal employment. Um, and now I know that there's a lot of women who are working and because as you mentioned about the need to balance yes. um, responsibility at home, Many of them have to opt for a job that may not be in, in, in the formal employment, right? So that they can actually do these work and home responsibility. So I think, I guess the question to put forth, not only to the government, but also to different sections of the society that beyond um, thinking of how we tackle that flexibility or work arrangement, is how do you actually, uh, the government talks a lot about economic transformation. In UN women perspective, economic trans transformation cannot be achieved without leveraging from the other half of the society. Um, whether they contribute directly in the formal economy to the GDP or they actually subsidize to the, to the, to the paid economy by being home and taking care of the children. Because Everyone here would agree that the most precious things in our lives are our children, are the next generation. Every single parent in this room would say the same thing, whether rich or poor, from whatever religious, economic, ethnic background, to say that we want to see our children have a better opportunity than we do. Whether you're rich or poor, right? We always strive for the better. So none of us can say that the unpaid care work and domestic work that the women Indonesian women particularly, and women across the world actually have done to support all these most precious things of our economies, of our society, is not part of subsidizing the larger economy because if we're not bringing the paid side and unpaid side together and talking about distribution, mm -hmm. it's really like we're missing the larger picture, right? And then um, from Komnas Perempuan, there's uh, uh, issues around violence. So when we're talking about um, economic, I like to emphasize that it's not just bringing, talking about GDP and income, but we're also like facing with income, the rise of income inequality here in Indonesia, right? So that's one dimension. Uh, violence is another dimension where we need to discuss because without safety, there is no way that women can actually participate in the social economic opportunities outside of home. Whether it's violence at home or violence in public space, okay. it's something Ms. to Ms. be discussed. Ms. Wise, uh, just, uh, I'm very interested in what you said. About, uh, you mentioned just now about uh, no, one, no country in the world has gender equality. Balance uh, responsibility is very important. But how do you translate this e equality and balance responsibility for your personal opinion? There's many ways of, of doing this, and I think, um, I'm sorry I took a little bit more time because I think when we talk about issues of women's in development, it's so complex. Yes. So I was just talking, just touch upon okay. just one aspect around economics and then safety, right? So there's another aspect, but let me just tackle your questions around how do you translate um, distribution of responsibilities, right, within the family? Yes, because in some... 
Ambassador Yari, uh, before we discuss about uh, the participation of women in the economy uh, and in development, so how is it working in, in, in your country, Finland? Uh, first of all, let me thank you for this uh, opportunity to, to talk. This is very a uh, very uh, big honor for, for, for me. And like Rice uh, was mentioning, that no no country is uh, perfect on this front. So so every every country needs to to, to improve. That it's kind of like an on, ongoing ongoing work. So uh, probably all of you you have seen the the, the picture of the. The, the newly appointed Finnish government or the, the, the four young ladies. It's been quite viral also in, in, in Indonesia in social, social media. So I just want to say that they, they were not zoomed out of nothing, that uh, there's a long, long history in, in Finland that 19, 1906 uh, uh, we gave uh, all the political rights, so right to be, uh, right to vote and also right to be voted for the, for, for the, for the parliament and it already in the first um, uh, uh, election, 1907, there were 19, 19 women in the parliament. We just had 1919 uh, uh, in April the, the, the elections, and now there are 47 percent uh, of of the of the members of the parliament are are, are women. Oh so it's uh, it, it's been an, um, a historic historic trend, and it has not. Uh, happened in overnight, but we are quite proud that uh, all our our uh, highest offices have been occupied by by women at least uh, at least once. We have had president like you have had mm -hmm. president. Uh, we have now prime minister. She's the third third one in that role. We have the minister of defense, minister of finance, and other 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 other, other ministers. So I think that we are we are pretty proud of the uh, the achievement, but uh, at the same time we also recognize that uh, there's still quite a lot of work uh, work to do. That, for example, our our labor market is still quite um, um, separated in that they're so-called women's jobs and men men's jobs. So it 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 seems to be that uh, that that uh, that the males and the females they they chose different a uh, different career career path, and they, we would love to. Uh, to, to see uh, kind of like more uh, crossing over of these uh, traditional traditional uh, uh, professionals, but I would say that in, in in political sphere it's it's pretty good the the the, the situation and then this the the, the photo of this uh, uh, for uh, young smiling women are kind of like the symbol of that of that achievement for the uh, for for the moment. And then it was mentioned here that uh, that they will it would be good to give. Uh, possibilities for uh, for uh, combining the, um, the 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 family life and then the, then then the working working life. And in our case, it's been a quite a quite big importance have been given for the possibilities of of putting the the, the kids to the day daycare. So that that that's one way to liberate mm. uh, liberate. Uh, and first of all, I, I would I would kind of like make a disclaimer. I've been in Indonesia for one one year and three months, <laughs> and I will be quite. Uh, Quite shy to, to to give any uh, any instructions uh, for, for for Indonesia. My role here, as as I see it, is like kind of like give some examples of, of Finland, but it's not the idea that I would say that we have done everything. Just yeah. follow us. So that's not the attitude. The attitude is to to, to learn from each other and then uh, yes. uh, compare notes and uh, and and break best practices so uh, so one one thing is this uh, this day daycare and then uh, probably the most important thing has been the education that the 100 years ago Finland was quite quite um, a poor and agrarian country and then how it has developed is one of, one of the biggest component has been the, the 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 education and the quality of education that all the time the there have been kind of like um, interest in putting more more quality to the to the to the education, and then one thing that I learned quite recently is that one third of the entrepreneurs in Finland are women. So that is actually quite good way to one third, one one third, and uh, it, it. I was surprised that the, the 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 figure is so is so high. So that's one one possibility probably to to tackle this uh, this idea how to combine the, the the family that you can be self-employed in in that sense that you have a company or you can. Imp 
you can you can have a small small company employing uh, em employing others. But I stop here so that <laughs> okay. so that like I uh, r referred to my disclaimer that uh, that the idea is that this is about Indonesia and uh, my role is kind of like a kind of kind of like a uh, in inspiration, but not not telling how to do the things. Yeah, okay, yeah. thank you, Thanks. Ambassador Yari. Uh, yes, we are here for sharing. Yes, and then to find a good way to for the future. Yes, before we come to the next section, uh, let's follow this one. Hello, my name is Dietmar Wolf. I'm from Germany. I'm Bavarian and I live in the near of Munich. Uh, I'd like to tell you my opinion about women in Germany. Most of them are working. They do have jobs and they do have their own career and every woman can do uh, the job what uh, normally men do and they get the same money for doing it uh, see our chancellor Angela Merkel uh, she's a woman so why not and she's the head of our country uh, my deepest respect goes to those uh, women who have their jobs their own career taking care for the family and the kids and they do have their homework also this is stressful life and a 24-hour job every day my deepest respect and best regards to my friends in Jakarta see you hello everybody my name is Aurora Koplico I am from Albania but I live in Italy in a city of Cremona for three years it is an amazing city and I feel happy and in love with it. I have a job as a manager of the cafeteria and preps food where I do it with passion because I'm in contact always with people from different countries. So, well, actually, in these days, we have to appreciate the democratic system who has influenced in a positive way for development and emancipation of the role of women not only in the family but even more in society. In Albania it is to be appreciated commitment to women in education and personal development. In fact we can see that women today are working as teacher, doctor or engineers but also they are giving their contribute to political life. It must be said that every day a woman tries to give the best of herself, whether in her home country or abroad. Yes, I think women have a power to change the world. They are such a wonderful creation, a mother of tomorrow. Thank you. Diplomatic Forum is brought to you by Voice of Indonesia. So those are two listeners of Voice of Indonesia. One is from Germany, the other one is from Albania, but his sister is in Italy. And it seems that they also agree what we are discussing today about the role of women. Education is very, very important uh, for to promote the women's participation in uh, development. Yes, Steve. And we are getting into the second segment. We will be talking about the gender mainstreaming. And I would like to remind the guests all here, you can join in just by raising your hands. Let us know if you want to ask a question. And actually, we got something quite nice for everyone who asks. And about the gender mainstreaming, I would like to ask Pak Gavur. All right, as one of the countries that signed the Sustainable Development Goal or the SDGs Agreement, Indonesian government must implement the 17 SDGs targets. And one of them is implementing the gender mainstreaming in development. And Indonesia has long had a legal basis in the implementation of this about the gender mainstreaming it is the presidential instruction number nine 2000 uh, concerning about the gender mainstreaming in national development and so 
the question is how do you evaluate the implementation of gender mainstreaming in our country? Yes, uh, it is getting better, but more to be done. More to be done. And then the government nowadays um, drafting a law that uh, for equal equality, kestara and gender. So by uh, through this law later on, uh, we have to do a certain uh, things. I do not want to reveal that now. Uh, later on, we are still discussing it within uh, the government. But there is a good intention that the government uh, put the uh, importance of the equality. And that is one issue. Uh, you mentioned about the impress, and we also try to revise the, uh, the impress, the instruction of the presidents, by inviting more uh, institution, a uh, government institution like Kamendes, uh, the uh, Ministry for Village, uh, uh, Village and Rural Development, uh, because through this ministry that the government could reach uh, the uh, the common people, and uh, that is one issue. Uh, but we also nowadays uh, developing um, strategy how to uh, plan. Uh, uh, in planning and budgeting, so uh, responsive gender. So through this mechanism, later on, more and more uh, ministry and institution in the country uh, be more uh, gender responsive. It's not only in the national level, in the uh, Jakarta, to the uh, government of Jakarta, but also in the, uh, the, the regional um, administration nowadays it's not only in at the level of provincial but also in the region uh, uh, level even through the villages uh, desa so it means that every single part of the uh, government will implement the um, planning and budgeting that are uh, responsive gender and it is a must uh, one of its uh, ministry that the ministry for uh, women empowerment and women uh, protection and uh, children protection and women uh, protection I'm sorry uh, that is the translation of Indonesian uh, KPPPA so this uh, institution the ministry um, measure the uh, implementation of a gender responsive uh, uh, development and they give uh, a certain uh, award toward the um, ministry and uh, institution that uh, well uh, prepared. For instance, in this case, uh, is the Ministry of um, uh, PUPERA, um, General General, uh, General Construction <laughs> and um, Housing. That is a rough uh, instruct, uh, uh, translation uh, peupera is one of the best uh, of course the uh, the the main uh, institution that uh, overseeing this uh, program is a uh, ministry of finance uh, bapenas the uh, ministry of planning uh, also kppa and kemendagri uh, the um, the um, house a uh, home affairs uh, ministry so more or less uh, through this mechanism we try to improve the um, <coughs> gender mainstreaming also the implementation of the development that uh, responsive gender <coughs> okay thank you for, uh, for and we'd like also to announce that as it was mentioned before that this uh, diplomatic forum is broadcast live through yes. YouTube and also Facebook and our listeners uh, David and also uh, Javid from Pakistan and also Suresh are listening and are following this program live yeah yes okay me. hello David and uh, Javid and also Suresh thank you for joining us t this morning yes uh, I'll ca go to Ibu Adriana as Pa uh, Gaful said, uh, we are in in the progress of uh, women's mainstreaming. So, how you assess this? Uh, for for me, is not not yet fully implemented, yeah. Because especially in uh, policy on like uh, disaster uh, management, something like that, 
we we have also the, the uh, gender mainstreaming policy in uh, above the head of uh, BNPB or uh, uh, bencana alam but uh, when uh, the disaster happen uh, always it's also happen the the gender based violence in uh, uh, refugee scam or uh, something like there's a uh, trafficking cases uh, also happen in uh, Palu and also like a uh, sexual harassment in a camp in in Lombok so I think uh, the, the the policy must be in apa uh, fully implemented and understand by the uh, the bureaucrat or the uh, the the staff who who in in the field yeah so this is the important of the why the gender mainstreaming uh, must be uh, fully impl implemented uh, because in uh, Indonesia actually uh, failed in uh, millennium development goals because of the uh, gender issue first is the maternal mortality and the second one is the access girls to the education so how we can reach the the sustainable development goals in uh, 2030 when we see that the the violence against women uh, always increase uh, every year and its majority is uh, domestic violence it's a 71 percent uh, uh, it's uh, in a uh, annual report of uh, Komnas Perempuan. Always uh, domestic violence is uh, uh, the highest cases, and we and as you as we know that in a sustainable development goals in indicator of uh, violence against women, we must uh, decrease. Uh, the cases on uh, uh, three uh, 2030. So uh, Indonesia must work very hard to to uh, decrease that. And then uh, the Human Development Index also, uh, the if we see the, we also have the Gender Development Index, index is lower than uh, Human Development Index. Uh, it means that they, they, they have a gap uh, between the, the Human Development, Development Index and then the Gender Equality Index. And that's, uh, so this is must be, uh, we have some uh, problem on that. And also in, uh, uh, representation, yeah. Uh, when we talk about the the, the, the decision making uh, process, uh, we see in a, in a level uh, the the uh, the lowest level also the decision make uh, process is like a musrenbang, a musrenbang desa. Is uh, like uh, it's they will uh, uh, program, they will plan the the, uh, the development program in the level of uh, uh, village. So it's also in a not not all of them uh, have the woman participation because usually women uh, they ask women to uh, use it uh, in the kitchen and then preparing the hot tea and the snack something like that and not uh, discussing uh, in a, uh, a program. Uh, so if we see that the maternal mortality is very high in a, a village, that's why because the the woman not participate in a decision. Uh, level uh, process and if uh, we know in a, in a local or a national level the woman participation also in a parliament we don't uh, we never uh, receive uh, achieve the 30 percent yet in uh, uh, politics uh, and if we see the see the, the convention of elimination against uh, discrimination against women 30 percent is uh, the minimum uh, of uh, number who can uh, the influence the the decision making below that we we cannot uh, have the policy that responsive uh, gender that's why uh, the bill of the like a sexual uh, violence is not passed until now it's already around five years because uh, the Woman representation is very low. Okay, thank you, Bu Adriana. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I would like to make a follow-up question, but it seems that Steve is, yeah. uh, is in a hurry to ask the floor for questions or just uh, delivering uh, opinions. Please, uh, Steve. Well, actually, one of the audience is ready with a question, and I think she is a student. So I would like to know where you are from and what do you want to ask? State your name, rank, where you are from, and your question. Um, hello, my name is Marcia Alicia. I am from Professor. Could you please stand, stand up? Stand up, stand up, please. 
a little bit louder, please. Um, my name is Marcia Alicia. I am from Professor Dr. Mustafa University. Uh, I want to ask a question for Paul Gaffer. Uh, before you said about certificate before marriage, but how this certificate will affect for people who want to marry? How many percent it will be success to edu education before marriage? Thank you. Okay, I think you got the question right. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, when we are talking about marriage, and also especially on the certificate. So the concentration is not on the certificate itself, but how to prepare yourself to be in the, uh, to become a mother or of, uh, a father of uh, your children later on. So this kind of education that I believe is more uh, the focus. And the government would like to introduce to, um, to the youngsters as soon as possible that getting married is not the relation between male and female. It's more than that. One is res a res responsibility that you have to take in care of your children. And uh, as uh, Bu Rais uh, mentioned earlier, that the res responsibility is high, especially in the si uh, current situation that the competition are also uh, increasing. So we have to prepare the, the children for their future life it is getting harder in the way that uh, I'm thinking it this from the economic side, as an economist by education. Uh, we really have to prepare not only uh, education, but also a health uh, for the uh, future generation. Uh, this is a must, as in the case of Finland. Finnish has a long history of uh, uh, good education, and we are reaching that way. So that's why we have a new uh, millennial uh, ministry, a uh, minister that we uh, put high hope uh, 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 to the minister that we will have a good education as, uh, as well as an, in Finland uh, in that case. So I, what, we, what we are going to do with the um, certificate for the uh, uh, preparing the youngsters uh, to, uh, to get married is uh, they, they have to know that the domestic violence, as uh, Ibu Ariane just mentioned, that is based off they do not know what to do. If they, especially if the 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 kids, I'm I'm saying about kids, if they are teenagers or early twenties, or uh, and they get married and they do not uh, know how to cope with the burden of uh, being a family, it means that it is a. a, a uh, uh, job of uh, a father in Indonesia that have to uh, pay all of the uh, economic uh, expenses of the family. Um, that is the uh, our culture, but we also do not hamper, do not um, prevent the uh, women to go to work. And in the case of Abu Rais uh, mentioned that there are plenty of women going to work especially on the uh, small and medium enterprises but please be understand this kind of job are under um, monitored um, because they do not pay tax uh, for instance ibu yang uh, for instance a lady that um, selling gado-gado uh, uh, in her uh, part of the front of the house and they do not pay tax. It means it's not that bad, but it is underqualified as in uh, in uh, in calculating the GDP. So that's why Indonesia is rich in the way uh, there are plenty of women working uh, in the small and medium enterprises, and uh, that is good. So that's why why the government right now uh, try to uh, in, uh, to socialize the economic digital in providing the, the ladies to work uh, to sell their products through the uh, uh, through smartphones in order uh, for them to uh, to not ha uh, have to pay the um, a certain amount of um, um, shop 
that might uh, uh, hamper their uh, economic progress. So what I'm saying that uh, there are plenty of ways uh, for uh, the youngster to know, and then we are going to have the special program uh, from the uh, Ministry of uh, Cooperative and Small Medium Enterprises that might uh, be uh, provide a certain loans for this uh, young um, um, adults. Um, uh, that would like to uh, um, uh, expand their uh, economic, um, um, what is that, uh, a way to improve their uh, their uh, family. And also we are going to cooperate, uh, to include a program from Kamenpora uh, that uh, they have a special uh, program from youth. So all of these um, ministries, programs, and institutions, we try to uh, bring along in one single program uh, for the uh, new bride. Uh, so they will uh, understand that uh, preparing for a family uh, need a certain uh, uh, ways uh, and uh, 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 tools and it's not only for just uh, go married without any preparation just for for us for driving uh, on the streets we need a sim certificate uh, that kind of thing so but this is not issue of the certificate itself but we have to understand uh, the reason why uh, we have to get married and why we have to prepare for them okay thank you for okay Elisa uh, have you got their certificate <laughs> she's going to get it she's going to get it yes of course like our father said it's better you have the certificate uh, than you do not like uh, you have a, a travel license okay Alicia yeah okay get free first yes. actually we got another question uh, from a media sorry sorry uh, Steve I think uh, she, she yes. deserved to get a gift I from know. a voice of Indonesia yeah all right okay. thank you very much Alicia for the question and here is what you deserve yeah Yes, we got yeah. another next question one, from a media. Okay. Water. I'm Tommy from Liputanam.com. Sorry? I'm Tommy from Tommy. Liputanam. Okay. Uh, saya mau tanya Pak Dubes dan Bu Adriana sih sebetulnya. Uh, first for Mr. Ambassador, uh, you said uh, one third of entrepreneurs in your country are women. Could you tell us the sectors in which they work? Is it culinary? Is it, you know, I don't know. And you mentioned about the problem of the separation between men's job and women's job in your country and that's a problem too so could you explain us how does your country tackle that problem that stereotype between men's jobs and women's jobs dan untuk Bu Adriana uh, Bu kan sekarang di Kementerian English, English maybe oh, can, can English? you can make it in English okay in English okay <laughs> so uh, now we have a new minister on the human development Minister um, from Ministry, Mr. Um, so, how about sexual violence law? Actually, I want to ask Does the Ministry already give you an ample help for the, the RU PKS? Uh, has the Ministry given you a good help to legalize this law? Maybe next year and they have new minister right so has he given you help in any way thank you yes yeah i'm not sure all right <coughs> thank you for your for your for your questions and it, they are they are not that easy so uh, the easy is to to to, to answer to the to your to your question concerning the kind of like the breakdown of the of the female entrepreneurship in in, in finland like you anticipated in your question already uh, quite a few of the of of the of the companies or the the, the firms are related to for example to uh hair hair hairdressing uh uh kind of like a beauty beauty in, uh industry uh cleaning services uh household household ser services and, and 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 so forth so you can kind of like see that uh the the the, the same um um kind of like the um, uh, the, the the separation of the of the interest of the of of the gender is mm -hmm. is also i mean applies also for the for the structure of the of the companies or the or the other firms and then the kind of like the more difficult question uh what what you are doing to kind of like uh alleviate it, this or encourage the cross uh uh um uh, kind of like a cross cross section between the traditional 
traditional profes profession, uh, professions. So uh, the idea is that um, in, in school, in edu education, what we try to do is to uh, try to not to make the stereotypic uh, uh, assumptions that the certain certain profession is is done only by uh, by by other other gender so the idea is that you that our education should cater for the needs of the of the individuals and then the individual individuals should, should be as free as possible to make the the, the decisions for for their future profession uh, uh, as as themselves as as individuals and not taking taking the the the, the, the stereotypic uh, roles, but it looks like that it's it's quite uh, quite long long way and it and, and we are still still um, um, uh, looking for the best um, uh, best best ways to, to 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 tackle that because we think that it would be better to. Uh, to to have not not the female jobs and uh, and and male jobs so so to say that it it, it would be it would it would be richer the the, the, the society mm -hmm. if uh, this kind of stereotypes would not apply. Thank okay. you, Tommy. Okay. Yes. Ibuadrena. Okay. Uh, so for the bill of uh, sexual uh, sexual violence, we have a fully uh, support from the Ministry of Women Empowerment and also from the Minister of uh, Human uh, Development. So uh, all of the government. Uh, minister actually is fully support. We, we have support also from the uh, civil society, the women's movement also very support us, uh, but still, and also from the women uh, member of parliaments. Uh, but still, uh, the problem is uh, in the uh, uh, in the frax, in the fraction in a uh, parliament, yeah, because uh, the debate is not uh, uh, not easy. It's very tough debate, and it's uh, always uh, some of the the member of parliament said that this is the this is uh, the law that legalized the LGBT some things like that and and how you know uh, do we not agree with the if we uh, will punish uh, by the marital rape something like that so it's uh, very uh, so the, the 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 fundamentalism issues and the conservatism issue also there uh, so this is uh, the why uh, with the uh, two periods of the uh, parliament, the, it's very hard to pass the sexual violence bill. Yeah, I don't know why, but uh, some of the political party also not support that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they 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 don't have the the daughter who uh, they want to protect her or something. Uh, but uh, the important thing is that Indonesia uh, must have uh, this law immediately uh, because uh, the, the victim every day is uh, always uh, there. Uh, last time uh, in uh, news, yeah, we, we know that uh, little girls are, are killed after uh, rape, something like that. And even uh, the, the sexual harassment in Indonesia are not yet have the law on sexual harassment. That's why if you go in the transportation and then you have the sexual harassment and the transportation, it's very difficult to process it in the law because uh, we don't have the article in the uh, uh, penal code that said uh, the definition of uh, the the sexual harassment in a bill of the sexual violence we have a nine definition of the sexual harassment including sexual harassment including the sexual exploitation including the uh, uh, forced abortion forced contraception etc et so if we uh, that's why if we as uh, our, uh, we want to pro if we want to protect our daughter or our f uh, girlfriend or our mother we should uh, have this law because uh, actually the, the predator also is in the house okay. uh, based on the annual report of Komnas Perempuan yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's when I said 71% uh, is also including sexual violence also there okay thank you Bu Adriana yes, uh, yes a gift for Tommy thank you very much for your question Tommy yes next one yes yes okay please Okay, thank you for the opportunity. My name is Lasmeri Girsang. I'm a lecturer for communication studies in Bunda Mulia University, Anjol. 
<coughs> not Jakarta. Okay, uh, let me give question of to Miss Rice Chansai. Uh, actually, last year in 2018, I've completed my study and the research from my dissertation is about uh, feminism. And I choose the location is Rusunawa. Rusunawa is uh, rumah susun sederhana sewa. It is a simple paid flat. Uh, there I find um, many uh, bad reality causing to the women's participation and I want to ask you something Miss Rice uh, can uh, can you give opinion or directly support for government to leverage the women's participation in a marginal environment because they are now still fighting for their uh, uh, their needs daily and there are still many inequalities in Rusunawa as a, a marginal location so I hope that the government will have a more uh, funding or more attention to leverage this uh, minority groups thank you can you state your question yes one more uh, time? just Go straight to the question. I just want to make sure yes. that I addressed it. Um. Yeah, because uh, you are gender and government specialist, UN Woman Indonesia. I would like to ask you if we can give opinion or directly support for government to leverage the women's participation in uh, minority mm -hmm. environment. Okay. In, Thank in you. Minority women. Yes. And especially in Rusunawa. And focusing on environmental issues. Yes. So and just a very short area, right? Just yes. in the Rusunawa, okay? Yeah. Uh -uh. Just in a flat. So it's a very, a very short yes. area. Right? As we know, there are many flats uh, in Jakarta under Basuki Cahaya Purnama leadership. Uh, there are many flats built since 2015. Okay, uh, Ms. Girsang? Yeah, yes, okay, Ms. Girsang, are, are you sure that uh, women are yeah. minority in flats? Yes. Sure? Yes. Okay. Uh -uh. Thank you for your questions. I have to um, um, I have to apologize earlier because I, I'm just getting over from the cold. Cannot stop my coughing. But um, I have to admit that I'm not an expert of your locality. So I will not be able to answer the question that are specific to the specific locality that you're talking about. However, I'd like to highlight some of the things that we're looking at when we're talking about the role of women participation in sustainable development, in environments, in renewable energy or climate change. Um, in the context of Indonesia, let's draw it back to Indonesia, I think the most important issues that I could think of in around environment issues is that Indonesia is one of the most vulnerable countries in terms of um, disaster risk. Right? We're like almost like a champion of how many disaster hits different islands and different places. But more importantly, these disasters are 80-90% in our region climate related meaning that it's related to global warming and climate change. And I think that one of the things that we didn't discuss so much before we get to women participation, I think we need to be able to highlight and provide a more empirical analysis of the impact of these climate related disaster, it is environmental conservation, pattern of consumption and um, production consumption and production because rarely we have enough evidence in terms of data that look into for instance the differential uh, deaths, for example, between female and male as an impact of disaster, for instance. Or look into the pattern of consumption and production. If we want to address issues of environment, we know, we know overall that, yes. that, that uh, even though very little evidence as well, but we know that women own less um, economic or productive assets, right? Especially, I'm, I'm sure it should be true for that area that you're talking about as well, Indonesia. Um, and hence, because the fact that we know that women own less economic or productive assets, they are hugely relied on livelihoods mm -hmm. and environments for their livelihoods and for da daily. And hence, I think that led to your questions about how do we support them. Number one is to actually work more on data. Mm -hmm enhance the data and mm -hmm. information that will inform policy that are gender responsive when we come to environmental protection, when it comes to 
uh, sustainable consumption and production, and as well as their role in uh, preparedness, disaster preparedness, and response. Mm -hmm. So number one is data, and UN Women is standing ready to support the government and BPS in this area. In fact, yesterday I just came out with a very good discussion around these issues to first come up with evidence because we know that what doesn't, if you, if if the numbers is not clear, if you don't have evidence, what doesn't get counted yeah. is not counted. You know, what doesn't get counted doesn't get counted in terms of the way uh, policy goes, the way discussion goes, because people assume, right? Mm -hmm. Disaster hit, it hits everybody. Yes. What else to talk about? Men and women die. Everyone die, everyone are in trouble. But that's not true because when you actually look at the number, you've seen in many, from tsunami to many, you have a, a huge number of female and death of children over men. And why is that? Why are we not questioning that kind of thing? So that's in one area. The second area that we would like to to discuss actually is to engage, um, and this is where you and women actually have a strong um, history, I think, as you, if you know that we're, we are an organization that grow from women movements to become a UN system. We're probably the youngest within the UN system. We really are uh, the production of women movements, and in that, uh, around this area of environmental conservation um, and, and disaster related climate change, we are closely partnered with women organization, with Komnas Perempuan, with different um, civil society that will bring the voice of the women into the dialogues, into the discussion, mm -hmm. because there is no such a way that, that the government can respond to these kind of issues without bringing their voice into the, the policy dialogue, right? Yes. So that's the second area, is to engage women organizations, civil society on the ground, and capacity building for them to be able to lead and connect in actually identify solution and early warning for their society, because oftentimes we have missed out so much from not hearing the women who is actually day in and day out contribute to their family and their community. So that's the second area. The third area is a larger kind of policy framework. This is linked a little bit to the data, uh, which we hope that we could actually support, not only just Indonesia, but in ASEAN as a whole. And I think that would give the political policy strategic framework for people in the community to make a reference to. At the moment, when we're talking about environmental conservation, we're talking about uh, policy, we have no way of, of actually um, provide interventions that are more tailored to these differences in impact between men and women because the whole policy look at everyone the same way. Okay. When you look at the SDG indicators, so I'm, go I'm going back to things that inform the government because I know that the government of Indonesia is very committed to achieve uh, sustainable development goals. Hmm. However, when you look into the environment, um, environment related goals, goal 12, go 14, go 15, all of the indicators that will give you, and this is go back to the moderator asking about how you evaluate the progress that has been made. All these indicators are talking at the high level where it's not related to human. For instance, reduction of CO emission, for instance. Mm. It doesn't have human face in it. Men or women, it's just reduction of C CO. So what UN Women is doing at the moment is actually working with a number of UN agencies who are influential in actually this type of policy from, from UNDRR, who's actually working on, on, on um, and UNEP, for instance, U UN Environmental Program. Um, we're working also with uh, um, the Environmental Conservation Union. And we are identify, we have the discussion group, so we identify looking at the indicator and bring it down to the human level. Um, and there's some of the, you know, the I can't discuss here because it's quite yes. lengthy, but just to let you know that um, from data to women political participation in actually define what are the solution that best for the community, the third area is to look at the policy framework and have the clear um, indicators and guidelines that can inform national policy that people or activists at the local level can make reference to that hold the government accountable to their promise to deliver those things. Okay. And, and we're happy to, to share those, those lists of indicators that bring it down from the kind of CO emission to a kind of human face. Men and women, what are their role? What, are they, what can they contribute to the environment? Okay, thank you, Mrs. Wright. So, Mrs. Gilson, Mrs. Wright will help you to get the data. Okay, uh, before we come to the next uh, Questions are uh, here we together with us in this forum, uh, Ms. Uh, Olia Boyer, yes, the director of Radio Asia Pacific Broadcasting Union (ABU). Uh, like what we we are doing today, this morning, 
Mr. Wu, yeah, that uh, we discuss things actually along this year, and today we discuss about women, the particip the role of women in the development. So now I'd like to know what is the roles of uh, media, especially electronic media or radio, in promoting uh, or in, 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 in supporting women's participation in, in, in the development. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, very big question. So um, I would uh, say that everything that's been said this morning applies to media. Mm -hmm. So media is no different from any other job or any other career. Uh, there are disparities between women and men in terms of how many women work in the media. And uh, as was discussed everywhere else uh, this morning, the gap between men and women in the media must be closed. For women to be able to develop, they need to see themselves on TV, in film, they need to hear themselves on the radio, in all of their different voices, and they need to be at the table discussing these things. So when, for example, I talk to our member broadcasters and we talk about um, programming and development, even to the point, where do you get your guests for the program? You must actually make sure that you ask women to be your guests and your um, experts on programs. You know, if, if you look around on TV, uh, many of the panels are all men, even though there are women experts that, that are as good or better than some men. You must, and it's an unconscious bias. So most of us don't do it because we want to, but it's because we, we know each other and we know people like us and we tend to revert back to people who we know and who we're comfortable with. So I think there, it happens at different levels. Um, the ABU recently hosted a forum on peace building and um, uh, uh, one of the, you know, Ban Ki-moon was a special guest and he said, when women are at the table, uh, peace tends to stick 35% more and longer. <laughs> so uh, it just goes to show you that in every, so I guess what I'm saying is every aspect of life um, and every profession, if you don't involve 50% of your population, then you're not doing your job in development because you need to develop the intellectual capacity of your entire nation, including women and the girl child as well. So, in order to make a balance, 50-50 percent of uh, women's representation, uh, especially in media. So, how, what do you want to say to the stakeholders? Well, the order uh, in, many, in many countries, people do that, and, and I know that in many countries in Europe, they actually count. You know, uh, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, and on an annual basis. And this is uh, going back to something that uh, Rice was saying: that if it doesn't get counted, it doesn't happen. And it's like that everywhere. So if whatever, you know, and, and nobody's saying that you must have 50% straight away. In some cases, you might have 80% women, 20% men, or the other way around. I think the point is to have it as a conscious decision. So, and, and once, we, once we make that conscious decision, everything follows. It's, it's, it's very easy, because once you start thinking, oh, wait a minute, you know, do we have any uh, female experts? Suddenly, your contact book increases by 100%, and your program becomes a lot more uh, interesting, because you're not using the same people over and over and over again, and you get better opinions, different opinions, um, and a lot more variety. So it actually uh, benefits the program and the service that you're you're providing. Okay, thank you, Ms. Oya. Yes, Steve, we still have we still questions have from the floor? We still have more questions from the audience, two yeah. more, and one from the Facebook. Maybe we go with the guest here first. Yes. Please, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Good morning, speakers. Yeah, I'm Harlina uh, from Kota Tangerang Selatan, from P2T, P2T, P2A, P2A, T, P2A. It is a non-profit non -profit organization who provides services for the community, especially for children and a woman, yeah, to help them against uh, act of violence, trafficking, and discrimination. Okay, uh, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Gofur, Yesterday, I think we met in Kota Tangsel, right? Yeah, to celebrate uh, Mother's Day. 
Yeah, okay. Mr. Gofur, just now you talk about the respons responsibilities for the very poor one. And I agree, I do agree about that one. Because the problem created by the poverty is very severe. This effect affects all aspects such as like health, health, education, child civil rights, etc. We have case a few months ago, and this is not the only case. Yeah, when a six-year-old girl raped by the father, yeah, and then we do a home visit. They live in the middle of a garbage dump, yeah. And the problem is not only for the little girl who raped by the father, but also for the fam the whole family, yeah, because of the poverty, such as the mother got domestic violence and badly, and uh, we are afraid that she is going to be crazy, yeah, if uh, if she wasn't help, okay. And also the other children, yeah, there are three don't have civil rights such as birth, certific birth certificate. And even the nine-old boy is illiterate, yeah, never go to school at all. So, Mr. Govur, um, I think it is not the only case, and you know, it is, uh, we have it, yeah, all around the Indonesia, because uh, the violence is like a f iceberg phenomenon, right, yeah. So, maybe you can uh, give us hopes here, yeah. Uh, what is the solution or the ways or the answer or the policy the policy of the government to empower women yeah who uh, who are very poor and the victim of the violence okay okay thank you yeah thank you uh, thank you very much for the uh, the questions uh, it's nice to meet you again Ibu uh, yes uh, we are here and there uh, it's not only for uh, meetings, but we are uh, the Kemenko PMK trying to reach uh, people and listen to what is common uh, problems uh, outside of our office, so we know uh, what to do. Uh, thank you for the question again. Uh, yes, uh, for this specific question, uh, it might be uh, Kementerian uh, KPPPA, uh, the uh, Women Empowerment uh, Ministry that has a lot of programs for that. Uh, also the Ministry of Social Welfare. Yes, uh, we try to uh, bring back, uh, w w there is a term for that, uh, let me get it in English, uh, rehabilitation and also uh, social inclusion for those victim victims. Yes, it is hard. So that's why, uh, why uh, from the beginning I mentioned that poverty is, has to be um, eliminated eliminated we have to get rid of poverty because that is the main uh, problems of uh, our society it's not only in indonesia even in the U united states or even in europe that's why why economic uh, is fair economic growth is very important but again uh, we have to balance in the uh, the social justice and also the issue of uh, environment uh, protection but without uh, any um, economic empowerment, it is hard because the whole problem starts from there. Uh, uh, a father doesn't have a job, tends to uh, stay longer in the house because of there is nothing to do. So even there, uh, his children become the victim of uh, his sexual, uh, sexual uh, desire. So that's why it is. Uh, we have to overcome the poverty, uh, that is one. And also you mentioned about the education and health, that is a must. So that's, that's why the government try to provide as much as possible. It's not only the, uh, the responsible of the, uh, the uh, government in Jakarta, but also uh, throughout Indonesia. So the uh, local government especially that has to um, well maintain uh, the, uh, the people. Why? If these people, uh, they do not have any job in the rural areas, they will go to the uh, this big cities, urbani urbanization. It's not only that, they go abroad to find a job only to become a mate and that is not healthy especially for the for the children of the family the social cost is high it's 
once again, the issue is about the uh, the job availability in the rural area, in the small city. So they are still, uh, they live entirely in the rural and the uh, small cities not go to the big cities. If they have a job, uh, in order to have a job, you have a skill. That's why education is more uh, important. It's not only for having the uh, uh, elementary school or uh, high junior high school or uh, high senior high school uh, certificates, but also the skill, uh, what we call it, uh, life skill that um, uh, provide you with the opportunity to work. For instance, uh, you cannot sell gado gado. For instance, it's very easy. If your gado gado is not good enough, it's a culinary of Indonesia, pak uh, <laughs> besar. So that kind of things. If you you are doing things good enough, so then people would like to buy again your product, whatever is that. From, uh, for instance, uh, so that's why we have a program right now. Uh, every village has its, uh, their own products. For instance, uh, Solo is uh, famous for batik. But uh, nowadays, all of our uh, Indonesia, they have uh, they produce their own batiks. But again, after that you produce something, you have to s be able to sell it. So that is another program that coming for the, uh, from the government that uh, marketing is important so uh, through the uh, I always mention the um, uh, the importance of smartphone for selling your products okay. again and again so uh, back to the question uh, yes we have to uh, increase and improve the skill of uh, the uh, the people and also to overcome the poverty yes so we have to eliminate the poverty give good education of course, creativity is also important. Oh, I think creativity. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Steve. Do we still have? Yes, questions? we still have uh, two more questions. But I would like to mention uh, David from Argentina. Actually, he is from Argentina. Is asking for the Mr. Ambassador. He asked about the Santa Marin's election as the Prime Minister. Will it encourage the young women to enter politics to change the world? At least this has um, obviously because the fact is that uh, the photo of the, the, the four ladies have become viral. So obviously it's resonating with some some uh, currents of 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 the of 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 the world. I mean, kind of like some some kind of need has to be there. Otherwise, it's not it's it it would not go viral that uh, that 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 fast. So I think that. Uh, at least in my country, it, probably it encourages uh, young women to be active in politics, and I and I hope also that uh, that in other other parts of the world. But I kind of like it would be quite safe bet given that uh, popularity of the of of her, her of her selection that uh, that obviously it uh, it gives some some positive uh, ideas for for the for the young young women around the world. Thank you. Okay, we still have. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, and we still have two more questions from the floor. The next one, please. Okay, good morning. My name is Clara. I come from. Sorry, Fiola? Clara. 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 I'm from Aksi Cepat Tanggap, uh, one of NGO Indonesia. Um, I want to ask about, as speaker mentioned before, we know so many Indonesian, Indonesian women issues. So I think it will increase mental health issues too. Mental health is one area where Indonesian women seems to be more in it than men. So how do you think about Indonesian women mental health issues to uh, women participating in development and how to face it about mental health issues? Thank you. I think it, this goes to Pak Gapur. For all speakers. All the speakers. Yeah. Mental health. Yeah. yeah. Mental health. Yes, mental health. Mental health issues. Okay. So, uh, Actually, uh, Komnas Perempuan also doing the monitoring on the uh, mental health issues, and uh, the the report is will launch in this uh, uh, December or uh, January, and uh, we found uh, some of also uh, the, the 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 problem, yeah, the, the the gender issues also in the 
in the uh, mental health services which is uh, the government are actually is very good to to provide their uh, their needs uh, but also still when we go to the uh, the uh, hospital mental health hospital or the 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 panti panti social uh, the rehabilitation center uh, some of uh, Woman specific need is not yet uh, uh, addressed. Yeah, uh, for example, like uh, the 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 woman specific needs of the uh, they they need on the uh, reproductive health, something like that, and also there's a forced contraception also we found in uh, some of uh, mental health hospital which is uh, who that uh, if women uh, enter the panty social or the the hospital uh, they go to the uh, we they call it moa method operative vanita is something like the the forced contraception uh, before uh, she enter because uh, the 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 the, re the reason is they are afraid that uh, the woman is uh, will be pregnant uh, by the other uh, 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 mental health uh, people there uh, the, the disability uh, psychosocial there so uh, some of uh, gender uh, based violence uh, issues uh, are rising on our uh, monitoring and also still there's a, like uh, a chain or uh, the to, re to restrain the uh, mental health people and as we know that some of in the uh, Indonesian area they have also uh, the practices of uh, Pasung, what is called it in English? Sure. Pasung, uh, uh, they, they restrain the, the mental health patient in a, in a house actually. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the, it, this is, uh, of course, this is uh, against the uh, the convention of the against torture uh, because Indonesia already ratified that uh, convention and uh, Komnas Perempuan also monitoring the uh, the the practices of the uh, like pasung or in a panti social is also under the mandate of the convention of against torture so sometimes they are uh, actually the mental health uh, patient is not uh, like a, a prisoner yeah but they mm. they they uh, also uh, are uh, Diperlakukan itu treat. Uh, they, they treat also like a prisoner because there's also prison in the. Uh, is, uh, they, they, al they also have the isolation area. They also have the chain. They also have something, something like that. So it's actually. Uh, so we. Uh, f uh, I also recommend the government of Indonesia also to eliminate uh, to abolish that uh, practices because okay. it's against the convention against torture. Okay, thank you, Ibu Um Pak Gabut, do you want to add this? Because uh, she wants the answer from all the speakers? Okay. Yes, uh, the issue of mental health is uh, very uh, uh, complicated in a way that uh, the victim of this uh, mostly are uh, the target of the uh, people that take benefit from others uh, for instance for the sexual violence and then uh, also this kind of people they are uh, they make fun of so uh, and as mentioned by Ariana uh, the government put uh, uh, them into panty rehabilitation or uh, the way that uh, to improve uh, again um, there are many women um, organization that handling this uh, this uh, program we really appreciate their advocacy and also their uh, assistance to this kind of people that are not as lucky as we are so uh, this is a huge task that we have to uh, deal with and uh, for your organization if you are involved in this uh, please also uh, educate them uh, in the way that uh, they could be uh, more um, 
um, responsible uh, for themselves in the way that um, uh, that uh, not others and uh, not letting others uh, to take benefit of them uh, it's a bit difficult to to explain in a way that uh, we really have to uh, improve uh, their uh, strengths uh, to overcome uh, these uh, the uh, their, uh, their illness okay thank you uh, Gopur. i think uh, my producer already gave me a sign that we are coming to the end of this uh, forum so Ambassador Yari and uh, Ms. Ms. Rice, later you can uh, add this answer in your closing statement, okay? Yeah, um, I think we start from uh, Ms. Rice first, uh, closing statement. Um, thank you very much for the opportunities to um, speak again. Just to wrap up a little bit, I think that um, the way I think from the Yen woman perspective going mm -hmm. into the next um, mm -hmm. four to five years mm -hmm. of our work um, in collaboration with the Indonesian government, uh, civil society, communist Perempu and all the actors, diploma diplomatic community, dialogue partners, I think we are identifying uh, four areas of work that we think it's important to as a catalytic um, point of view to actually tackle uh, gender equality, inequality and sustainable development in Indonesia. Um, number one, and all of these four areas that we identify are very much aligned with the government mid midterm, five year midterm development plan, as well as the priorities at the national level. Um, number one, on human uh, resources development, um, we think that it's important. Um, I think uh, many speakers today have highlighted the importance of bringing in the attention to the f other half of the population. Mm. Um, I know for a fact that the government have highlighted the importance of um, human resources development in the policy in education, bringing in the millennials and young people like Nadim and others to come and try to ramp the, the education here in Indonesia. So um, we also, from UN Women perspective, is to look into the quality of education um, it's not enough to look at the parity, as we all see from the MDG time. We only look at the parity of access to education, but then we don't look at the quality of the education and how that education and that skill development transform into jobs opportunities. Mm -hmm. So that's one. Number two area is for economic transformation. Um, we are committed to support women economic empowerment in, in these countries. We're looking to forward to working specifically um, on entrepreneurship development um, for Indonesian women and focusing on small medium enterprises. You would have heard um, actually from the, the president himself, President Jogovi tweet just a couple of days ago speaking about the importance of the small medium enterprises as a backbone of Indonesian economy and within that space um, there's a stats that clearly show that there are a large number of women owned or women led um, small medium enterprises in the countries that need attention to ensure that we um, expand these opportunities. We're looking into a few um, sectors that are important. Uh, one is in terms of the, the digital economy. The second area is also in food industry and in, uh, a few other areas that are like tourism that are off the particular advantage of the women in terms of service provider. The third area, I'm going to go very quick, I see that the time is up. The third area is very important. Uh, someone mentioned about environment, right? Um, on climate change, renewable energy and disaster. I think there's an important role that women has to play in this um, sector, especially as a priorities of the countries for sustainable development, and we have discussed about that a bit quite at length. The last area, which is has been discussed to a little extent today, but I was glad that the colleagues from the media have mentioned it around um, peace and security. Um, women, peace and security is high in the agenda of the foreign minister of the Indonesia government, and high in the context of ASEAN as well, um, as was clearly highlighted um, how much we would have missed out in the whole fight for prevention of violence, extremism, in creating peace and stability in the region without the engagement and the voice of the women in the region. I'd like to highlight before I end here that next year is the 20th anniversary of the UN Security Council Resolution 1325 which we're very proud about it because it's a triumph of the women movements to get 
uh, women peace and security issue into the Security Council. Usually they said, you, you women, you go, go out to the other <laughs> General Assembly, don't come here. So um, Indonesia is committed to be part of it, and yeah. also Indonesia is sitting in the National Security uh, in the UN Security Council as well as a member. Um, next year, also very important to highlight. Please give me just one minute to say this: is the Be 25th anniversary of the Beijing Platform for Action. 25 years since, right? So it's for anyone who fight for gender equality and women movement would know that this is a pinnacle point of time okay. to look into the progress it has made and how we go about it uh, okay. going forward. Okay. I That's think, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Ibu Adriana. Okay. Uh, for the closing statement, I would also wish you a happy Women's Movement Day because uh, the, mothers, the Mother's Day actually in Indonesia is different like in uh, other countries. Yeah, The Mother's Day in Indonesia actually uh, the Women's Movement Day. On uh, December 22, uh, 1928, uh, uh, a whole woman, uh, some of women from the all of areas mm -hmm. Indonesia are gathering together in uh, Yogyakarta and then they they uh, did the first conference of uh, Indonesian women which is uh, discussing uh, many of uh, women issues like uh, polygamy and then uh, the trafficking and also uh, women participation in uh, politics so uh, 22nd of December is not a Mother's Day, but a Women's Movement Day. And uh, when we talk about the uh, women's representation in uh, politics, in a uh, decision level, uh, decision making process, uh, we should understand that uh, the, the mandate of uh, CEDO is a uh, 30%. But uh, they also understand that 30% is not enough. If we do voting, uh, we will fail. Uh, as, uh, as for example, like uh, to uh, decide uh, how is the important law for women, something like that. Okay. So uh, the UN uh, already uh, launched the Planet 5050, means that uh, the 50 women must be uh, participating in a public uh, area. So I agree with my friend from uh, media that uh, 50 Planet 5050 must be uh, realizing how. How to realize that uh, Planet 5050 is we should closing the gap. Okay. Uh, the woman uh, represented something like, it's like a glass ceiling. Uh, it's something uh, maybe like uh, we don't have the problem with a woman participating. Every, we give all of the role of a woman. But actually there's a glass ceiling that uh, it's not uh, not clear, it's not, uh, but it's, 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 it's there. Okay. So we, sh we should uh, eliminate uh, abolition is that uh, glass ceiling for okay, a woman okay. participation. Thank you, Bu Adriana. Yes, Ambassador Yari. All right, thank you. It has been a bit has been a pleasure. I've learned a lot, and uh, uh, Madam Bryce uh, introduced so many figures that I'm going to introduce one more. This is the 65th anniversary of the Finnish-Indonesian diplomatic relations. Oh. So I'm very happy, happy for that. And then this, uh, the gender issue is not only uh, promoted uh, by Finland, but also my my Nordic colleagues. So we have a, we have a good cooperation not only with with the um, uh, UN UN Women but uh, other organization as well so I'm pretty pretty happy to continue uh, this dialogue and then I'm pretty sure that my colleague at our uh, Nordic uh, embassies are also very very eager to con continue then um, about the iron, iron environmental things we we kind of like uh, uh, third is the, the, the buzzword called uh, circular economy, so we think that that's very important and it, it contains huge possibilities for Indonesia that, uh, that waste also can be raw material and reused and when you, when you create this kind of like uh, loops, you can uh, um, uh, make uh, economic growth uh, without uh, putting uh, waste to the, to, 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 to the, to the nature. Uh, then um, uh, I, I, I was thinking I, I forgot to mention one one thing to Tommy who asked about this uh, about that why they have uh, female jobs and, and men's jobs. So one interesting um, um, kind of like um, uh, trend how to tack, how to tackle that is to to give mathematical skills kind of like uh, direct 
uh, programming and mathematical s skills for uh, for for girls, and that is something that uh, because very often the, the 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 girls they have biased against uh, math mathematics, coming probably from the from the families. But you can tackle that in uh, clever ways to, for example, introduce programming, and and that would be. Uh, um, nourishing the the digital economy of the of the future to to tap into the talent of the fifty percent of the of of the nation and then i uh, I, I would like to to end by um, just mentioning briefly about this mental health health issue that uh, also in in industrialized countries, it seems to be that the young generations are very much feeling the pressure of the of the society, not only about their careers, also about the families. That you that, that they have a tendency to wanting to be perfect in all the sectors of life: perfect mothers, perfect fathers, perfect workers, uh, working uh, night and day, and then uh, then even even some some extra. So I think that. One one way to tackle that would be to work for the de-stigmatization of the of the of, of the mental health problems. That if you have a uh, if you have an illness, traditional illness, you go to a doctor. If you have a, a hard time with your mental mental uh, state, you should be as free as con consult consult a specialist as 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 with the with a doctor, and it shouldn't be a problem. So I think that if we can like create that. Um, kind of like more welcoming attitude towards uh, uh, mental problems. It would it would help many many people. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much, Mr. Yari. Okay, uh, I think uh, Pa Gopur, you can save your <laughs> closing statement. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of our diplomatic forum for today. And give a very big applause to our speakers today, Mrs. Weiss, Mrs. Adriana, Ambassador Yari, and also Pa Gopur, and also to our guest on the floor. Give a big applause to our floor, our guests in the floor. <laughs> and of course, to our uh, Diplomatic Forum team. <laughs> okay, I'm Dalat Pane. I'm Stefan as well. Thank you very much for being with us and see you next time. Uh, next year, of course. Next year, of course. <laughs> <laughs> You've just listened MC. to Diplomatic Forum, organized by Voice of Indonesia. Voice of Indonesia.